Hi everyone! This video is a library research tutorial for Professor Fuller's Bio 107 class. My name is Claire O'Dowd and I am the Electronic Resources Librarian at Rockland Community College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do research for your assignment through the library's website. First, we're going to check out how to search and browse through specific journals. Then I'm going to demo searches in two large databases that search multiple databases at once. Then we're going to do the same in a smaller database that only searches for scientific articles. In these demos, we're going to look at how to search using keywords, refine searches with filters, and how to identify primary research articles like studies. We're also going to go over where to find the Bio 107 guide on the library homepage, as well as tools to help you with APA style and formatting. Now, first off, the easiest way to find the library website is actually going to my RCC. And we are actually one of the options um, under the My Apps. So if I click on Library, that brings me straight to the library homepage. On the library homepage, there are several ways to find us um, if you need help with anything. There is this orange Ask Us button, which serves as an instant messenger chat, which is signed out currently. But when we're on, you'll get a pop up for your name and your question. There's also, we have an Ask Us link here under Research Help in the bottom left of the page. And there are numbers to text and, uh, there's numbers to call, text, and email. Um, for this semester, since everything is unique, the librarians will usually not be in the library, will be operating remotely. The CERC staff will be around to answer the phones, um, but if you do need reference help, we encourage you to contact the librarians directly who will be working remotely. So the text services still works, email still works. Uh, chat and text are generally functioning uh, during the library open hours. Email you can use anytime and within, and once we're open, somebody will jump back on to answer your question. Our chat feature, our instant message feature, also now has a screen sharing, which um, we found, especially now that we're not in the library with you guys, very, very helpful in conducting remote reference because we can, you know, both the librarian and the person asking the question can see what the other one is doing, and it's been super helpful. Um, so we encourage you to take advantage of that. Uh, this semester, the library will be open with limited, ser uh, with limited services and some limited seating for student computer use um, if you do need to get into the library. So first we're going to start off with looking for specific journals. Part of your assignment is to browse through the journals Nature and Science, which you can do on their, on their website, which you can also do on ours. We have certain subscription databases that will allow us um, to get into things you might not be able to get into on a public site. A lot of academic research is behind a paywall, um, but the RCC Library does have subscriptions to help you get through those paywalls. So I'm going to go down here to search tools on the left side of the page under find a journal. And I'm going to type in nature. And here I have a list of databases because we subscribe to a bunch of different databases that have um, some run of the journal Nature, and I do want the most thorough one. So there's a one year delay so I can get things from about 2019 um, and back to a certain extent. So I'm going to click on something that I know has at least a one year delay, not one of these that ends in 2015. And while it will allow me to see the titles, and the abstracts, and other basic information about some of the newer articles, just like on the Nature website, it's probably not going to give me the full text of the article. I'm only probably going to get the abstract, which is, which is the summary um, of the article the author, authors will submit. But I want to read the whole thing, so I'm going to go down to 2019. And something that I know was a little more than a year ago. And I want to look for what would be a primary research study. So I can see here there's something, a topic that um, 
slightly topical now, receptor for bat influenza virus uncovers potential risk to humans. There's only one author here. So I think this is actually a secondary article because it is looks to be summarizing a study. Um, yes, uh, Caracas et al. report that the bat flu virus, yada, yada, yada. So it's, it's talking about a study. It's um, kind of a digest article. And it looks like it references some other studies to give background information on the subject. So if I go back one, I believe that this study is actually published in the same issue of Nature, which is this one. MHC class 2 proteins mediate cross-species entry of bat influenza viruses. If I'm looking for research study, research studies are generally conducted by teams who do laboratory experiments. And this is a good sign because I see several authors, uh, which probably means that's the study team. I can also, if I want to save this article for any reason, I can download it, save it to my drive, or email it. I always like to err on the side of having the full article either sitting on one of my accounts, like my email or my drive, or download it onto a personal device so I don't lose it. Um, there are ways to grab links, but if you do, you want to grab the permalinks, not the link up in the address bar that expires. It doesn't cost you anything to save the articles on machine or on a or on the cloud. This one usually you'll see something like abstract come up as part of the formatting of a research study. This one says main. I can oh here specify the role of. HLADR in bat IAV entry, we generated two clones. So this is telling us what they did. A lot of studies will take you step by step on how they prepared to set up the study and how they conducted it, the results they got, and discussion. So you can see that label methods, that's usually part of the research study format. They're not all exactly the same, but they usually have certain elements that appear in every research study. And whether it's a research study or not, you do tend to find a long list of references. When you do your papers, you will have to reference certain articles um, to give background and context and to explain your interpretation. That is exactly what they do in a research study as well. So I'm going to click off of this. So that's one potential topic. And you might also want to look for other journals other than Nature and Science. You do have to find other biology journals. This particular database that we clicked on before that says find a journal is looking for particular journals. It's not searching for individual articles. Once we do a keyword search in the databases, um, it'll pull up articles from any kind of source. Um, and all different kinds of journals. Here we were just browsing in Nature. I want to find something that's more specifically biology. Nature covers a very broad scientific topics. So let's just type in biology. So I'm, here I'm doing a keyword search for biology journals, not necessarily articles. You can see some of these things get more specific than just biology. I'm going to try this one, marine biology. And here's a list of databases they appear in. Try this one, Academic Search Complete. I believe there's a delay on this one, so I'll grab something that I know is over a year old, but not too old. And you can see I have a list of journal articles on marine biology topics. I'm going to take a look at the first one, Climate Change Impacts on the Distribution of Coastal Lobsters. I 
Again, here in this database, you can save things to your drive, you can email, you can grab the citation, which is very handy. It'll give you the long citation that goes at the end of your paper. They are automatically generated citations, so you always want to check it against an official example, but it, it is much faster than constructing them manually. If I see, so EBSCO, the Find a Journal database we have, um, EBSCO is a large database company that hosts smaller databases, and they all have pretty much the same format. So in a lot of these, you'll see HTML full text or PDF full text. PDF means you open up the PDF and you see the article as it originally appeared in the database. HTML full text means if you scroll down, it's right in the browser. So I've got the abstract here. I think this article has a more traditional format. I have my introduction methods, results, discussion, and naturally my references. So now that we have two topics we can play around with, um, both for bats and human influenza and lobsters and climate change, we're going to jump into during doing searches for articles. So I'm going to click off of here. And in the center of the home page, we have this big search bar, uh, which is going to take you to a database called Primo. Um, it's just the name of the platform. And it will search, well, by default, it searches everything, but it'll has more than just articles in it and more than just scientific journals. It's any topic, different types of sources, ebooks, books on the shelf, articles, and newspapers, and videos. So I'm going to start off kind of basic. I'm just going to do bats, influenza. Those are the main keywords I pulled out of those articles. I can widen or narrow it. I can add more specific keywords. I can make it broader. I could do bats and human disease instead of just influenza if I'm not getting what I want. I can also filter it here. So I say I have a book here. If I'm looking for peer-reviewed articles, a book isn't going to help. So I can narrow it. I can change the date. So if I go to creation date over here on the right, if everything from 1900, 1900 might be a little bit out of date for what we're doing, so I'm going to refine that. So it's kind of like online shopping, except you're looking for academic content, you know, instead of shopping for shoes. Um, another filter I can use is peer review. So over here on the right, I can click peer review journals. I'm going to lock both of these filters because this database, if I change anything, likes to erase your filters, but you can lock them. So a quick note about peer review. Um, not all academic journals are peer reviewed, but professors often ask for you to find peer reviewed research and incorporate it in your research. Um, scholarly peer review is um, when a work, um, in these cases, primary research articles or studies um, are reviewed by other professionals in the field before they're accepted into a journal. Um, the process usually works like a group of scientists conduct a study, they write an article about it, and then they submit it to a peer review journal. The editors give it to a peer review board of experts in the field and they review that article. Um, so, and allow either they accept it, they reject it, or they accept it with conditions on cer conditions of certain revisions. Um, so it's basically just like an extra form of quality control um, that people often want to find in their research. Okay, so I've got those two filters in here. I also have the option to sign into this database, which just signs me into the database. It's not necessarily like being signed into my RCC. So if I sign in here. I am already signed into my RCC, so it might just automatically assign me in. I won't get that landing page. Um, but because I'm signed in, I can save these articles just to these databases. It's not going to go to your you know, RCC drive or anything. But, and I can also save my searches. So I think I might have saved this article in a different demo. But if I click this pin, I see the pin lighting up. It's going to save that article. It's going to save my query. So if I go into 
I go to this pin or somewhere in my account. I have my saved records, so I can access these records here. I find the saved searches very handy because it um, kind of saves your thought process, which I find I often forget when I go back to doing something days later or even hours later. And because your results can change. Um, a database might lose access to a certain journal. Um, new issues of journals and newspapers come out all the time. So the same search one day will, might give you a different result list the next week. So I'm going to jump back to my results list. And then if I want to take a look at this second article, um, I can see it does label it as peer reviewed in case I didn't use a peer review filter. It also labels it as open access. Open access means that these articles are actually freely available online, unlike a lot of journals that require you to pay for their content. Um, I do find using databases like this, which are proprietary and the library does pay for them, easier than searching either going directly to the sites for single open access journals or even using something like Google Scholar. Uh, the search is just a little bit easier. It aggregates it a little bit better. So I still find it pretty useful to use these even if I want free open access content, but it's still peer reviewed. Um, you know, they're equal in quality to research you have to pay for. And this also has a neat feature this particular database called the Citation Tracker, which are these little red arrows you, or you can access through these little red arrows. Um, find sources citing this. So these would be articles written after this one that reference this one. And if, they, and if you have access or if they index it, even if you only have access to the abstract on this database, they're here. So if you're trying to find related articles for a paper, this is very easy. And I can click in if I see available online, it means I can access that online. And then I can also let's go back one here and I'm gonna reload this because it doesn't always reload the citation tracker links very well. I'll try going into the article. Just want to load on this one at the moment, but there's also a list here, find sources cited in this. So if we're going to try to find something cited in that article, this will give me the links to everything in their reference list. Which is really handy, um, again, for finding related articles or just even seeing the conversation in the scientific community. Now my links are back. Anyway, I'm going to click back into this article. It's going to bring me to a landing page uh, where I do have some options. I can grab the citation. I can email it to myself, although it just emails you the permalink and not the whole article. But I can grab the APA citation from here, which is pretty handy. And because this is a database that searches other databases at once, it has a list of these databases, which will help me to get to the article. Um, something like this one, a prior, will be called proprietary database. Just takes us to, means the library subscribes to it. Occasionally you'll get errors in trying to access them and hopefully you'll have a list of several databases in which this article appears. Um, but it'll just show you, usually in different layouts and different databases, you'll be able to access um, these articles. So this one takes me th through a few steps before I can access the article. I'm going to click off of this quickly. Um, something like if you see anything that says unpaywall at the bottom, it usually takes you straight to the PDF, um, which if you're on your own device, you can just download onto it. Um, it's very easy. And if I check out this article, uh, it's a good sign I have a lot of authors. 
this isn't labeled as abstract, but this beginning text in bold looks like it might be the abstract. I'm going to scroll down, results. I know that's generally a part of the format of research articles. Discussion. Materials and methods. Usually materials and methods comes a little earlier in the formatting of these kinds of studies. There's no hard and fast rules, but you will often see these formats in research studies. And this kind of helps you, this is how they communicate exactly what they did to set up the study, to perform the study, the results they got that are a discussion and interpretation of those results. I'm going to click off of here. I'm actually going to jump out of this database and go to another one. So we're back on the home page. We do have a second database, um, which is an older one that we've had for a while. The one we just checked out Primo is a little bit newer. We have a second one under search tools, right above find a journal where we were before is EBSCO discovery service. It takes us right to the advanced search. And I can either just punch in keywords now, or I can um, add some filters. I might want peer review or full text. You know, I can also filter for the year if I want. I can do the same search, something like bats and influenza. And this looks like it might be a different article on a similar subject. I saw that MHC class two in a different article. Although this one looks very new, so I think I might only have access to the abstract of this particular article. We do have an interlibrary loan service, which is free for students, staff, and faculty. It just means that you put in the request and on your behalf, the library asks another library that has access to it um, for the article or the book or whatever you need. It does say it takes some time. Um, I think because there is a link to this abstract to a different in a different database, it's coming up in my full text filters. So sometimes you find quirks like that. But if you want to either set up a lib interlibrary loan account or need help with that, you can always connect with us. It might be a little bit slower this semester since. And there's no guarantee of, you know, how well staffed libraries are, um, given the current environment. Let me scroll down. Yeah, I have slightly different results than I got in the other database. So it's good to know because doing research is kind of like educated trial and error. So it's good to know all of your options. Um, and when you're searching online, particularly if you're doing academic research, it's good to know all or most of your database options. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to try a search for the other topic we were looking at. I'm going to do lobsters and climate change. Try going back to the advanced search to see if any of my filters are still there. They're not. Scroll down, scroll down here, and I'm going to click on one. Since these are studies, they tend to be very specific. That's another, oftentimes it is a hint you may be looking at a study if it's very specific. If there's just something that says the effect of climate change on lobsters for, you know, from 1950 to 2000, or, you know, a general book, on, you know, a general background on marine biology, it's probably not a study. Um, This is looking at, you know, fishery in Western Australia. It's pretty specific. Again, pretty similar format to that find a journal database. I'm seeing PDF full text. I can save things to my drive. I can email myself the article. And I can also make it give me the APA citation. You 
and I'm gonna open this one up. And I've got an abstract and introduction, materials and methods, results. So I know this is an original study. Can also, if I find that I'm not getting the results I want, I can change my keywords a little bit. I can say global warming in lobsters, since they're sort of equivalent terms. Because what this search is doing, and Google does the same thing, is it's trying to match your keywords to text. So it's looking for global and warming and lobster. If I really want to get more specific, I don't just want to look at lobsters. I want to look at rock lobsters. I could say rock lobsters and global warming. Which is going to give me different results. So we just checked out two very large databases, which search you know, more than just scientific articles and more than just articles. So we'd have to filter out for those. I'm gonna click off of here. We do have science specific databases. So if again, if I'm down the left side of the page under search tools, I'm going to go to databases by subject. And I'm gonna scroll on down to science. And in the center, there's a list of different science databases. Some of them are generic databases that have science content. Um, some of them are article databases. Some of them, like this first one, is database of videos. I'm gonna go down to Science Direct here because this is gonna offer me scholarly scientific journals, which is what I want for this assignment. And I don't have to filter up for any kind of resource type because I know this is going to be, you know, with the exception of maybe some book chapters and conference papers, uh, these are going to be very largely journal articles, all covering science. So I did my climate change lobster, did similar search results, or I did a similar search or the same search. I'm going to click on this article. Here. So here I've just gone directly into those to a database instead of starting from a larger one, which will take me out and bring me into smaller databases. Um, this one doesn't isn't as dynamic and doesn't have as many of the filters as some of the larger databases, but it does have just science specific content um, and it's got a lot of good stuff in it. And I can tell from looking at this because it's got the parts of the article that I'm looking for that it is a research study. You can also tell if you're scrolling through it. A line like this, adult American lobster were purchased from a local supermarket. They're telling you everything they did. You'll see we a lot in these as well. And here, um, it doesn't. this one doesn't have any automatic citations or something that allows you to directly email the articles. If you click share, it gives you the permalink. Um, again, if you're on your own device, I would just download it. Always err on having the file on your device or on one of your own accounts. Occasionally there's you know an IT blip and it's harder to get onto the databases or something's up with my RCC or you forget your password. Um, I would say if you're very paranoid, download it onto your device in case there's a storm and your power goes out, you still have, and you don't have access to the internet, you still have access to your articles. Or download it onto your, you know, if you have your Google Drive on and your email on your phone, put it on that if you're willing to use your data. Okay, so now that we've gone over the research part of it, when you actually write a paper, you need to format and cite it. Um, so just like the studies we checked out, um, you're also going to have to put in your references, format your paper in a particular way. Um, and for science classes, we use APA, kind of like on Wednesdays we wear pink. It's just the format they, they use. Um, so I, while I do recommend auto citations, you do want to be able to check them you know, against something else, like an official sample. 
we do have um, an APA citation page. Look under research help, we have citations guide, citation guides on the library website, but it's heavily based on one out of Purdue University in Indiana, as is pretty much every um, college and university library citation page is based on this one. It's called Purdue OWL. So I can just type into Google. I'll do Purdue OWL APA. So it'll bring me straight to the APA page. And here it'll show how to do in-text citations, which automatically generated citation machines, whether they're on a database or whether they're a separate site like Citation Machine or BibMe, um, don't generally give you in-text citations. And this is when you reference something in the body of your paper, um, you need to put a short citation in, which usually looks like this. Um, in its most basic format, it's last name, year, page number, uh, but it'll show you how to count for if you're using the author's name. If you don't have a page number, generally if you don't have a page number, just leave it out. Uh, but I'll show you how to account for all that. Also in text citation, author and authors, which since we're looking at studies, sometimes there are 10 authors on it. So it shows you how to account for and format that. You can also check out, if I go to the reference list, articles and periodicals, it'll show you the format for an article in an electronic journal like the ones we were looking at. So if there's something funky coming up on your auto citations, you can have a quick look at that and just make sure it's correct. It's still much faster to do this than to do it manually. There is also on the left over here an APA sample paper, which not just has a sample paper, but points out to you all the parts of the paper and it will show you, I think, every existing element and heading you can throw into a paper. You may not need to make use of every single one, but it's all there. And if I go back to my RCC, Microsoft Word actually has templates um, for citation formats or style templates. And I am too cheap to pay for Microsoft, but um, through RCC, we all have access to Office 365. And I think this is an informational page about, I'm just gonna click on the icon, um, which you can make an account for free with your RCC email. You just need to go back and confirm it. Uh, but there's a Word template. So this is kind of like Google Docs um, in that different, you know, it's cloud-based and multiple people can edit the same document. Uh, but it's got much more functionality than Google Docs. And if I go into Word, there is an APA style paper, so it's a template. And so I generally recommend any kind of formatting and citation shortcuts that you can take. I personally hate doing formatting and citation, um, but this takes a lot of the tedious work out of it. Um, and it also allows you to concentrate on writing good content instead of, you know, making sure you're correctly indented. Um, and it's good for your professors too, because it's kind of like standardized spelling. It makes it easier for them to read and understand if the formatting, the citations are all the same. And if someone's grading you, you generally want to do what you can to make their life easy we sign off, I'm going to show you guys where to find the Bio 107 guide. Go back to the library homepage. And on the left, under research help, we have research guides. Going to select biology on the drop down. And here's Bio 107. And here you'll find a lot of similar information that we went over in the video. And it's just an additional tool you can use while doing your research paper. So that's gonna conclude the tutorial, but the research help does not end here. If you need help with either this assignment or any other assignment at RCC, please feel free to reach out to us.